words. All of us get confused from time to time on which to use. Like, is it dithering idiot or blithering idiot? Lucky for us, the first American dictionary was born right here in this house. Otherwise, all of us would go around sounding blithering, dithering, <sighs> like idiots. This is the very first American dictionary, researched and written by Noah Webster. It was published in two volumes in 1828 and contained 70,000 words. I was happy to point the way to the house where it all started. Webster House this way. This way to the Webster House. Webster House is this way. Hey, do you know what lepidoptery means? No. Neither do I. Can you go to the Webster House and find out for me? Because that's where you find the definitions to big words. It took Noah Webster 20 years to write the first American dictionary, working on it for the last five years in this house. Originally located in New Haven, Connecticut, but moved to Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford in 1936. Curator Jeannie Miller was waiting for me there. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Mo. Welcome to the Webster House. Well, I'm already in love with it. What's your favorite feature of this house? Oh, there are many beautiful ones, but it would be the entablature. What's an entablature? Let's go look it up in Webster's. How convenient. This was Webster's study. This was the room that he did all of his work in. His tools were his books. Even though there were English dictionaries from Great Britain, Webster felt America needed its own English dictionary because new distinctive words were being coined on a regular basis. There were lots of words that were uniquely American, like chowder, skunk, applesauce. Is applesauce one word or two? It's one. Webster also didn't like the British way of spelling certain words, so he simply changed them. Like logic. The English spelled it with a K at the end, and Noah said, we don't need that. So he took the K off, and it ends only in a C. That's a, a logical way of spelling logic. Absolutely. Words like theater, he decided that spelling them with an R-E at the end was not correct, so he decided we should spell it E-R. I gotta tell you, if I put out my own dictionary, I'd make some words up. Did he ever do that? He did. There was only one word that Noah Webster ever made up. It was demoralized. Every writer can understand that. There <laughs> are always stretches yes. where you are demoralized. Yes, absolutely. Webster's American Dictionary was published when Noah was 70 years old. The two-volume set was so massive it took a year and a half just to print it. But at $20 per copy, a lot of money back then, it failed to sell. The Webster Dictionary didn't become a bestseller until after his death at age 85. He slept and wrote in this study until the very end. Was this his last bedroom? Yes. He died in this room. A writer's cramp? No. <laughs> but good try. <laughs> what was the longest word in his dictionary? That, I'm not sure. I know what it is. Can you tell me? Hippopata monstra sesquipedeliophobia, which is the fear of... Long words. Thanks to Noah Webster, we'll never have to fear big words again, because we can look them up in his American Dictionary, which now contains over 600,000 entries. And I'm not gonna lie, our vocabulary would be pretty dull without it.